I'll proceed with our opening statements of two minutes each in duration and according to the number each selected for the order of speaking. And Joe will be speaking first. Good evening. I would like to thank the organizers of this forum for their hard work setting up this event. I would like to especially thank Sue Beller for her work organizing this political forum. I want to thank in advance the questioners, timekeepers, and the local media for their participation in this event and for broadcasting the forum for those who were unable to attend. When I first ran for village trustee, I did not think that four years later I'd be running for mayor of Messina. I have always had pride in Messina and have always shown an interest in what is happening in our village. My 25-year dedication to the volunteer fire department is just one example of my pride in Messina. My four years as trustee will give me the experience to look at all aspects of village government and to prepare an acceptable budget for the taxpayers of Messina. I will do my best to present a balance between what we can afford to pay and the services that we want to provide for our citizens. As a retired member of the Messina community, I understand the concerns of the majority of the citizens of Messina and will have the ability to dedicate the necessary time to the office of mayor. I'll use the office of mayor to encourage any effort that will bring jobs and expand the tax base of the village of Messina. We cannot view economic development as a democratic or republican idea. We must encourage any effort that can expand the economy of the village. The future is dependent on cool and careful consideration of all services that the village offers and to prepare an acceptable plan that looks and listens to all avenues on how to continue. I want the mayor of Messina to be the captain of the team and to remind everyone that there is no I in team. I will be open to anyone who has an idea on how to provide the services to the citizens of Messina in the most affordable way so that we can continue to enjoy the quality of life that we have been accustomed to. Again, I would like to thank everyone who helped organize this forum and look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Uh, again, I, I would like to uh, uh, thank Sue and her group for sponsoring this forum. Um, my name is Jim Heidi. I'm the uh, son of uh, James P. and Rita Germano Heidi. I am uh, the husband of uh, Sandra Heidi. And I'm a proud father of Jamie, 22, who just made me a new grandfather. And Robert, 11. I also have my sister, Jean, in the audience. I thank her for coming. Uh, I attended Holy Family High School. I attended Canton College. I worked a number of years with General Motors, where I transferred after, I think it was nine years, to Detroit, Michigan, where I resided for 25 years. I had left General Motors, and I partnered in a business in Detroit, uh, where we worked with uh, automotive tier two, tier one, tier two suppliers to the big three. We uh, conducted quality containment uh, uh, issues, and uh, we responded to those issues. Uh, basically, what I what I would like to say is that I come from a business background. I've worked with two Fortune 500 companies, Pitney Bowes Corporation, General Motors. I also started and partnered with two businesses. One I currently maintain. It's a... Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it's tough up here, folks. <laughs> now I know I don't want to run for president. But, uh, it's a uh, recruiting services, and I also do sales for uh, Wall Street Corporation. Uh, the bottom line is, I have a business background. Messina as a corporation should be run as a business. The bottom line is, we need to increase revenue and bring business in here to address the issues that we have before us now. Thank you. Thank you both. And now let's continue with this informational forum, allowing each candidate to respond in two minutes for each question. Brian will start with his first question, and, uh, and Joe will respond first. Mr. McCauley, there's considerable speculation that the next Village Board of Trustees will abolish the Village Administrator position. If that occurs, how will you be prepared to run Village Government without the assistance of that position? 
Well, like I say, I am retired, so I certainly don't have the time. There's no question about it. I would, I would uh, you know, you would have, without him being there, obviously the day-to-day -day operations would take, uh, you know, be important that the mayor have his hand on everything. Um, I think at the same time that we do have very competent department heads, and for years and years before the administrator was here, the department heads did a great job running the departments, and they still do a great job running the departments. And I think in conjunction with, a, with what I would say, I would be a full-time mayor, I think we'd do just fine if that was to happen. The, the full-time mayor plus with our very competent department heads, I don't think we'd think we would need a, we wouldn't even need a, a what's the word, heartbeat. Uh, I don't think there'd be any problem. Okay, thank you. And now Jim, respond please. Well, Brian, I, I uh, am in favor of keeping the village administrator on for the simple reason is, again, the scene is a corporation. It's a business. It should be run as a business. I am not qualified, and I don't think a lot of people are qualified, that uh, they could run this business effectively. Uh, I see uh, the village administrator as a grant writer as a day-to-day -day coordinator of the operations. Uh, it is true that uh, I feel these department heads are qualified individuals to run their particular department, but uh, I also see that y you have to have a person in office or, or maintaining the village and a day-to-day -day operation. And again, I, I don't see where anyone could step up to the plate right now and run this as a business as a way it should be. Thank you. Bob has a question now, and the answer will first come from Jim. Mr. Heidi, with the shrinking tax base in Messina and investment in downtown Messina over the last year or so being removing blighted buildings and burned out buildings more than actual new investment downtown, how would you propose to increase the downtown area, the, the long-term uh, business operations and so on. Uh, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the movement of business went from downtown to the mall for a while, and now the mall has also had a shrinking base as well. Uh, how do you propose boosting Messina? What efforts or what uh, uh, strides would you make? You've talked about your financial background to try to get Messina back to being one of the star communities in St. Lawrence County? Well, Bob, it, it, it has to start with the MBD, uh, the, the Messina Business Development Council. Uh, they have to take the initial role into bringing industry into this town. That's, that, that should be the major function of the BDC. Uh, not, not too long ago when I was, I was giving this, there was a marketing study done by the Carson Consulting Group. And this study was in conjunction with a, a study also that was uh, uh, prepared by Clarkson about businesses or uh, uh, groups that, that are conducive to Messina's business or, uh, uh, climate. Manufacturing as we know it today is gone. And I think Messina and the BDC should uh, re-look re at types of businesses that could come here as far as uh, data, uh, uh, data uh, businesses or, or uh, uh, high tech businesses and such. Uh, and in fact, in Detroit, no one got hit harder with this economic. I'm fighting a cold, so please pardon me. No, of all times, for a cold to come, but uh, there was no area that was harder hit than the Detroit area. And Detroit has reinvented itself from the Rust Belt area now to where uh, they're looking at high tech robotics, uh, call centers, things of that nature. And that's that's and the reason why they have that is because you have to have cooling climates and such, cheap power, that sort of thing that could uh, uh, influence businesses into coming here. Uh, this again was a roadmap design, and it was in, it was put out in 2006, 2005, and this is a a great roadmap as to reinventing Messina, and I don't know why it's not being implemented, but. Given this roadmap, we could get Messina back on its feet again. 
Well, first of all, I do not think government is the answer to revitalizing downtown Messina. I think if we, need, we can help in some ways. There's no question about it. But I think most of the revitalization has to come from the private sector. Because the public sector, we just don't have the dollars. And so what do we do? We've got Clarkson, only 30 miles away. And I would think that there's uh, some great minds up there who have ideas on how to help us start. Uh, Trustee Wilson has said in the past, these incubator type uh, industries, these small industries that we could bring in. One of the reasons why the village board decided not to tear down, the, I've been asked that many questions, why didn't we tear down the, first, the, the whole complete Slavin's building? Well, I think we all thought that because of that one structure was so structurally sound, that it would provide an opportunity possibly for the BDC to get a small company who might be interested to come in and start up something. And that building would create a very good facility for someone to come in, real be able to take the building and get something started. Um, I've said to many people, but I've talked about jobs in Messina, our answer is to try to attract several small companies that hire a hundred people. If we get five small companies, that's 500 people. And I think one of the biggest things we've got going for us is the RDRVA. I think that 20 megawatts of power means an unbelievable amount of potential for our area. And if it's in Waddington, it's still going to help Messina. If it's in Brazier, it's going to help Messina. Not only possibly with increasing sale tax revenues throughout the county, which means we'd increase our sales tax share to Messina. And there's no question that we have that I have been a firm supporter of the RDRVA. I was not the one who suggested that we send the contract back to the power authority because it wasn't good enough. And I was not the person who suggested that maybe we ought to sue the power authority. Thank you. Now each candidate may make a closing statement again of two minutes in duration, and we'll begin with Joe. Again, I'd like to thank all the organizers of this political forum. I'd like to thank the questioners, timekeepers, and local media who covered this forum and broadcasted this event to those who could not be here tonight. On Tuesday, November 2nd, the citizens of Messina have a clear choice for Mayor of Messina. I have the dedication and experience and time to devote to the Office of Mayor to lead the village for the next four years. I believe that the Village Board and the employees of the village must work as a team to provide the services that we have been accustomed to, but at an affordable cost to the taxpayers. I believe that I have the ability to listen to all ideas that can accomplish our goals and continue to make Messina a place where people take pride in saying that I am from Messina. I would like to thank my family and friends who came here tonight to encourage me, and I would encourage every eligible voter to go to the polls on Tuesday, November 2nd, because you can make a difference, but only if you vote. Thank you. Jim, go ahead, please. Thank you, With the economy the way it is, and the joblessness that's facing uh, the situations here in Messina, there seems to be no real vision from what I've seen on how to handle it. Messina used to be a thriving and bustling place. My main focus will be to restoring the pride of Messina, looking for ways to reinvent Messina. It can't be business as usual. We've got to change and adapt to be more aggressive in our approach and to take a, a firm stand into bringing more business back to this community. You're given the chance to serve as your mayor I will actively pursue the opportunities to revitalize our downtown area, cooperate with other municipalities, and to, and to encourage the Business Development Corporation and the Messina Chamber of Commerce to be more, to be more active in bringing high-paying jobs and tourism back to Messina. My other priorities will include finding resources to help clean up our neighborhoods, neighborhoods and to improve dilapidated structures, working with the recreation officials, to offer more venues and activities for children of all ages, and to investigate potential areas for cooperation and consolidations between the town, village, and maybe the school systems. Messina used to be the jewel of the North Country, 
and it should concern everyone in this village how we can reinvent our downtown and make it more appealing 